Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's roundtable, we've got the Zen Master that cannot pronounce his R's, Mike Zen Master Zeno. Mike, how are you? <laughs> I'm all, I can't even say it now. I'm all right. <laughs> that sounded bad. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Ours are and overrated. Then, ours, they are. They're way overrated. Uh, and then, of course, we, we get the, the, the pleasure of listening to the female, the female guest, because we've always been so male-dominated. It's so nice to have Cynthia Chapati. Cynthia, how are you? I'm pretty good. Great, great. You're not intimidated by all the testosterone. A little bit I am, actually. But really? I'm here. Yes. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I think it's great that you're, you're uh, becoming a fixture on the roundtables. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then the big papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how's it going? I'm great. Thank you. Everything is uh, moving along. It's getting cold. It's getting cold. How's, how's the baby? How's the sleep? Uh, you know, as much, you know, we're sleeping as much as we, anybody can expect, I guess. Not great, not bad, but whatever. It's fine. I'm young. All right, you bringing the baby to boot camp, San Antonio? Uh, I don't think we're going to go to boot camp. I think we're going to, well, not San Antonio, but I think Scottsdale, we're planning on it. All right, awesome, awesome. And then for sure, Elite Weekend. It'll, yeah, definitely. And then Eric, hashtag Team Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good, thanks. All right, great, great. And then last but not least, you know him, you love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And of course, then automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Just a reminder today's podcast is sponsored by the land geek bootcamp. So if you haven't registered yet for the bootcamp, go to landgeek.com forward slash bootcamp. We're almost full for San Antonio. So do that now. Oh, and by the way, do you know we have a set it and forget it system to get paid called geekpay.io? I never say it, but I feel like I, sh I feel compelled to just remind the listeners. All right, let's just get into it. Um, this is kind of a, a more of a woo-woo topic, but as we kind of get down to the end of the year, I think it's, I think it's important to kind of, you know, take, take stock of where we've been all year and, and then look forward and, you know, it's kind of New Year's resolutions time. So Mike Zeno, we'll start with you. How do you define success? How do you define success? Yeah, I think that's a great question <laughs> because I think everybody defines it differently, right? To me, we, and one of the great things about our business is, is, the, is the time creation, right? You know, I like to think of all our systems kind of like force multipliers. Like we're, we're really just creating you know, so much from so little of our efforts. So success to me is being able to honestly spend time at my house, spend time around my kids and, and do things that are obviously meaningful. Uh, as a, probably a lot of people define success that way. I mean, I work for the fire department and I used to do a lot of overtimes. And now, it, you know, that would take up a lot of time away from the family. I don't, I don't do that hardly anymore. And it's just been a whole new kind of experience. And so success to me definitely revolves around time and just, you know, uh, my, what I want to do is I want to be in the yard. I want to be in my basement, hanging around, tinkering with stuff and I just relaxing. So I'm able to do that through the land investing. So that to me is success being able to create, you know, a play a, a system where you can pay for your bills, pay for your expenses through this passive income and then just chill. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um, Cynthia Chapati, what's your definition of success? I agree with a lot of what Mike said. Um, I completely agree. It's about, you know, having the time to do the things that you want. And I think it's different for everyone. You know, everyone wants to spend their time differently. But I also, for me, a big part of my definition of success is also kind of synonymous with my definition of happiness, which is growth. Because I'm the kind of person, like, if I'm not growing, I'm really unhappy. And that's, you know, kind of how I stumbled into this land investing business. Because I was like, okay, hey, what's next? You know, what's my next goal? What's the next thing I'm going to accomplish? And I think that goes the same for a lot of ambitious people, you know, a lot of ambitious people, everyone on this call, probably all the people listening to this call, you know, you, you all want more from your life, you know, you want 
that drive and that those goals to work toward. And for me, that's success. It's constantly growing, constant and never ending improvement so that you can achieve your goals, but also being present. So like enjoying the journey more, working on those goals, getting that progress. And then, you know, what Mike said, spending time with the people that you want to spend time with doing the things you want to do and, and um, really embracing that. Yeah, I like that concept. Um, it reminds me of, you know, this term that I, I used to kind of say a lot, like you're either camping or climbing. And we can't cl- keep climbing, climbing, climbing all the time. At some point, you got to go, you know, and kind of shut down a bit, camp, and then get ready for your next climb. Um, but I think the challenge for, you know, ambitious type A people is gearing down and actually camping and being present, right? And then getting ready for the next climb. I don't know. I know for me, it's, 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 I've had challenges like that at a time where I'll gear down and maybe I'm taking a long hike. I'm like, Oh wait, I should be working. Right. Um, I sh- the shoulds kind of like start, uh, taking over. And, and now instead of being present, now I'm in my head, like I should be doing this. I should be doing that. And I just have like Elon Musk on my shoulder. Cause I just read his biography, his autobiography, like, well, that guy's working now, you know? Um, so I think it's, I think it's one of those sort of challenges, but um, I, do, I really like that, that answer um, just as much as Mike's too. Uh, Tate Litchfield, what's your definition of success? You know, success, it's, it's an interesting topic and it's different for everyone. Um, one of the things that I really like doing is reflecting on my why, like what motivates me in this business and what I've realized is success and happiness and my why all go hand in hand. Um, so for me, I'm judging my success based on kind of the quality of life that I'm living and the activities and the time that I'm able to do or time that I'm able to spend and devote with the people that I love and care about. So that to me is uh, the definition of success. Um, and, you know, when we when we start off on this journey, everybody starts with a number in mind. And as they start to buy and sell more property and they start to build that passive income, what I've found is that that number tends to get a little bit smaller than what you originally thought it was. Because you realize that with all this free time, you're able to do things that actually bring you a lot of joy and happiness. And so you don't need as much money. So, you know, for me, success comes down to kind of time and and the ability to be a present dad and, and a good husband and, and give back to my community and the people that I care about. Wow. That was deep. <laughs> I, I think I might, I'm going to steal all of these different, see, this is why I'm going last because I get to steal everybody's answer. Um, Eric Peterson, what's your definition of success? Well, I think that um, success for me, uh, first of all, comes just, in small increments, really. I mean, it's, it's meeting big goals, but it's also meeting small goals. And, um, through meeting those small incremental steps, um, you know, it gives you that momentum to keep moving forward and, and, and ultimately just kind of feeling successful for achieving those goals. Um, even if they're small, um, and working towards those bigger ones. Um, but, uh, Ultimately, you know, uh, like everyone's kind of saying, you know, it, it comes down to freedom and having time to spend with family, friends, and, and whomever you might want to. Um, so, I don't know. I guess that's kind of how I look at it. You know, for a second there, I thought Eric was just going to be like a Tesla, but he didn't, <laughs> <laughs> which was shocking. Shocking. Isn't um, that in yours, your list? We'll get to me, Eric. We'll get <laughs> oh, to me. Jeez, Eric. Jeez. Wow. That's a little, uh, uh. A little aggressive. <laughs> Give us your and list now, Mark. I, I'll get to my list. I've got a whole list, Scott Todd. See, look how, look how quickly Scott comes to Eric's defense. Team Scott. All I, right. I, I think Team you're Scott. reading into something. I don't know. Possibly. All right. Scott, what's your definition of success? I mean, there's been a lot of great, great answers, uh, you know, so far, but um, I, I think that, you know, defining success, I mean, like f- 
before it used to be like I needed to, to earn a certain amount of money, right? Like I wanted to have a certain amount of money. I wanted to have a certain level within a company, right? Like, and then, you know, all of that shifted at one point to where as long as my bills are paid on a monthly basis, all is good, right? Like, you know, yeah, it's nice to, it's nice to um, plow down more money into savings, et cetera. But, you know, I think that at the end of the day, for me, it comes down to, to time. Am I able to, to do the things within my time that I want to do? You know, Mark, uh, you know, it's no secret. I've been taking uh, like flying lessons, learning how to fly a plane. And so, you know, it's really cool because I started that, I started that process in August, uh, the end of August. And basically, I'm, I'm almost done. So, you know, in four months, I've gone from never really doing anything with a plane to actually like flying the plane by myself now, you know, like ready, ready to take the, you know, the, the FAA's check ride, et cetera. But there's no way, there's no way I would have been able to do that in four months had I not had the time. I mean, the fact that I was able to, to you know, to, to take three days a week, you know, a couple of hours each day to go do that it really became a game changer because, you know, I, I was able to do it faster. I was able to go, I was able to go faster. I was able to pick up information faster and I was able to, to allocate like time to even studying for the, for the knowledge exam, like the written exam, you know, like that's stuff that it takes time. And a lot of people are able to, you know, have to put it off because life gets in the way. And for me, I was able just to plow down and just, just do it and have fun. So like, that's a definition of success for me is, you know, can I, can I control my time? How much of my time do I control? And, you know, is my bank account, are we paying the bills and is the bank account growing? I mean, all of those things kind of are meaningful to me. I think you really have to determine what's important to you. Is it time? Is it money? Is it whatever it is? And, and then that's your definition of success, not mine. Yeah. I mean, I think if you'd asked me like what my definition of success was like, let's say 10 years ago. Right. And I was being super, super honest, like not kind of giving, you know, a typical, um, you know, answer that, you know, that would be politically correct. Like if I was really, really being honest, I'd be like making more money than my brother-in-law. <laughs> right. Or, or, you know, um, something, you know, something very, very ego driven or, you know, having a bigger house than Scott Todd, you know, or, or something like that. Um, if I was being really, really honest, it would, it would have been something, you know, very, uh, you know, very ego driven. And I, I think today, uh, especially going through what I went through in, in 2010, um, my definition of success is, is, um, you know, creating, you know, meaningful work and meaningful relationships, like what Cynthia said, growth, um, what Tate and Scott and Mike said and Eric, you know, working when I want, where I want, with whom I want, you know, this time. And um, because what, you know, we can always make more money, but we can't get more time. And, and what time I think buys you is though, to do those things in life that you really, really want to do, to be, to be the best version of yourself. And and, you know, like this morning, the best version of myself was actually going to a new breakfast place with my wife and putting the phone away and really having an in-depth discussion about our middle child and where he's going to go to school next year. There's no way we would have been able to ha have that relaxed conversation over breakfast on a Tuesday if I was working my investment banking job, right? And I would not have had even the energy to be present after coming home from work, I would be like, where's the scotch, right? I need to gear down. I just had a really stressful day, right? And then she would have come to me around nine o'clock at night and said, hey, we need to talk. I was like, can we talk tomorrow, right? Or we'd have to defer it to like a Saturday. And I, I think it's these, these little precious moments for me that like, okay, that for me is success. And um, I don't know, Scott, do you like that answer? I do. I think, I see, I think that that's what a lot of people miss, you know, like, um, I remember, you know, when, when, um, like when I was working for the, for the man and I would go meet my wife for lunch, you know, it was very rapid, right? Like I got to get back. Uh, you know, there was a, there was a sound on my phone because I had VIP alerts set up, you know, like, 
uh, if my boss emailed me, bing, my phone would go off. Or if there was something urgent, bing, I had like all these VIPs. And so my phone was always ding, 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 all, all day long, right? And I ignored the other email, not really, but I mean like those were low priority, but when I heard that, that little bing, I would jump onto the phone. And there's no way that you can kind of enjoy, enjoy the moment when you're obsessed with your phone or, you know, or your, your thought process of, oh, well, this is what's going on at work. I got a problem at work or, you know, what are we going to do about this problem? Or I got this deadline. And, and honestly, you know, like in this business, it's great. Like there's no deadlines. You know, the, the beings on my phone are gone. Uh, it just doesn't, doesn't exist. And, you know, probably, probably the closest thing I have to a Bing right now is, is Voxer. And I've kind of shut that down because it, it, it kind of was annoying to me. So, you know, I, I, I go in and look at Voxer, but it's not something I jump on right away. And so you get to control, like you get to control your time. You get to control the, the annoyances in your life. And then all of a sudden you start to look at things and you're like, well, well is that something I really even want to do? <laughs> do I even want to deal with that anymore? Right? Like whether it's a customer or something, you know, like how much frustration do I want to interject into my life or none, right? Like it's okay. Like it's all okay because I control the time and I control everything else. Yeah. I, I like that Tate. Well, I was just thinking about what Scott said right there. And I always tell myself that there's no such thing as a land emergency. You know, it, they just almost don't exist in this business, right? You can have a disgruntled uh, customer, but you can have somebody call Mac, have a VA call him back for you and say, you'll give them a call tomorrow or when you're back at your desk. And so that's kind of, kind of the beauty of this. And this business eliminates, you know, that, uh, that need to be a hundred percent on your phone or near your computer all the time, 24 seven. And that's, I mean, that right there is kind of the definition of success, right? I'm not tied down. I can go to a movie in the middle of the daytime and not worry about my emails. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, I think this is a good question for Cynthia because you just recently quit your job, right? And so what do you do with all this time now? I mean, are you, are you not at this level yet? (laughs) But I mean, are you, are you lonely? Like, are you calling your, your friends and be like, Hey, let's go over the movie, a matinee. And they're like, well, I got, we're working Cynthia. (laughs) Well, I'm still, you know, my time is slowly freeing up, but I'm not, I'm not, at the level where all you guys are, where you she, not really working. But, uh, Mark, she has survivor's guilt. <laughs> right now, she's in the survivor's guilt phase. I, I, I've spotted it. What's that? Because it's where, it's where you can walk away for the day and like just enjoy life, but you feel guilty not working. Yeah, that happens all the time. See? We've all been through it. and you'll, you'll get over it. But it does take some time. Like well, usually you, you have to meet some certain, certain thing. What's that, Cynthia? I'm still at the point where there's like a ton I have to do. It's not as much as it was when I started, but it's, I'm slowly getting there. But I mean, yeah, I do kind of get lonely sometimes. Like I'll go, I'll go work, you know, with Mark at his office. I mean, I'm just going to come work with you today because I don't want to be alone. But my cats keep me company, so that's nice. Or I'll go like on a walk in the middle of the day to go <laughs> you know, season major. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, that I'm, I'm writing a book now and I, one of the chapters is the downside of all this time. It's like, <laughs> no one's around. Everyone's working. It's like, dude, let's, let's go hang out. And it's like, uh, yeah, I'm not my own boss. I'll get fired if I just, you know, leave for a matinee. I'm like, okay. So, and one of the best. what's the problem? Yeah, I know. Exactly. I'm like doing you a favor. <laughs> Do it. Um, but, you know, Eric Peterson, you're still working. You work from home. I don't know. What's, the, what's your, what's your workday really like? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I do work from home. Um, I'm here by myself. I mean, my wife comes and goes based on, you know, if she's got to run errands or pick up the kids in the afternoon from school and different things like that. But, um, you know, I've been, I've been working from home for quite some time now. So, you know, I'm kind of fully adjusted to it and it's, um, you know, it's just part of my day, I guess, you know, it's, it's really nice, um, to get out each day though. Uh, I really enjoy 
just driving my kids to school in the morning because it gives me an opportunity to, to get out of the house for a little while. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's go ahead, Cynthia. I was just going to say, you know, for me, I think working from home was a big adjustment. I think it's like, it sounds really awesome because before I was commuting 40 minutes one, one way to my job. So I was in the car an hour and a half every day and I was so excited. And I'm like, I'm not going to have a commute. This is going to be awesome. I'm not going to have to get in my car. But I also think that it's like after, you know, the, the newness of it wears off, I think it's a big adjustment, especially if you're used to working for someone else and having to drive to an office every day where I think most of us have probably been on this call. And it's, it's a big adjustment. I mean, I literally had to cancel my Netflix account because I would, you know, I'd work and then I'd say, okay, I'm going to go eat some lunch. I'll just like watch an episode quick. And then three hours would pass. It's four o'clock. And I'm like, ah, this is terrible because no one's there like kind of managing you or telling you like, Hey, this needs to get done by this time. So I think for me, and you know, I want to say a lot of people working from home, it takes some time to really get into that rhythm and, you know, set that schedule for yourself and say, okay, these are the things I'm going to do today. This is, you know, I'm going to be at my desk by this time. So I think there's definitely, there's an adjustment to it for sure. Yeah, I, I remember. Um, go ahead, go ahead, Scott. I was gonna say Cynthia, like, but you don't have to like work during the day. I like working during the day. Why wouldn't I work during the day? Oh, see, I don't want a day job. If anything, I'm just gonna answer some emails at night. That's that's a dream, but that's my definition of success. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you know, Cynthia, you, you were kind of like that kid that like had really, really strict parents in high school. Right. And then all of a sudden they go to college and they freak out with all the freedom. Right. And I, and I think we've all been there um, that when you make that transition, I remember my, I think my second year working for myself, I'd done really, really well that first year and um, it was kind of getting easy. Right. And I'm like, you know what, I'm going to get an Xbox. And I brought an Xbox into the office. And for hours, I would play Xbox. And I, I mean, and I was feeling guilty, but I got, I was addicted to it. Like I was, I'm like, wait a second, there's no consequences to this. I'm playing Xbox for hours. My wife doesn't know. She thinks I'm working. And, um, you know, finally, I, I, it was like, this is just, I, I have to be an adult. Like people would come by the office and they'd see, I was like embarrassed for myself. Like I, I'm a man child, you know, and uh so finally I got rid of it, but um, I, I went crazy like with all the freedom. And so now I've got, like my wife would say I have OCD, but I think I'm just self-disciplined and I have structure. And um, I almost think that having more structure creates more freedom in that way. But that's a whole different topic for a different round table. Let's go to the next topic, uh, Mike Zeno. Shutting down early for the holidays. What are you, what are you doing this year? Is, is that a joke? Is this, this can't be a real topic. <laughs> There's no way we're going to talk about this right now. I, I look, if you're, I mean, you're, you're talking about like, you're talking about like shutting down, like, I don't know, like Christmas Eve night early. Right. Like, is that what we're talking about? Uh, how about? Yeah. So yeah, the flight school it's people the know, know the mini bat. <laughs> There's no shutting down. The machine continues to work. That being said, I mean, you know, it is something that we should discuss. Mike, what are you, what are you doing as far as the well, last two weeks of the year? I'll, I guess along those lines, I'll say that, uh, you know, things are winding down and kind of already putting my vision towards the next year. And so really just kind of uh, cleaning house. We still sent out a massive amount, I think probably within the last, after this next mailing, about 6,000 mailings have gone out. So we've really taken massive action on that end because I know we're front loading next year with a ton of properties to really, you know, set us up for a great year. So I think I'm just kind of winding down with some really nice acquisitions, still making some sales and just kind of letting the dust settle and um, not getting too comfortable. I don't believe in getting too comfortable because, uh, but uh, I think just kind of slowly looking for that transition into next year and setting some big goals and, and just, you know, happy about what we've accomplished this year, but, um, but still a little uneasy as we talked about, and we want to be uncomfortable and move into an, uh, something bigger and better next year. So we're, we're lining it all up, you know? So uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say I've, I don't see myself shutting down because um, uh, I guess the people that do the work for me, they're going to take time off. Right. Uh, but the system itself will still be moving. 
maybe it'll slow down a little bit, but I don't think it'll completely shut off. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cynthia Tripathi. I mean, if people want to buy land, I'm here to sell it. So I have no no plans on shutting down. I'm I'm ready to take sales. All right. What's Tate? my simple philosophy? Yeah, I mean, we're going hard until the last day. We're not slowing down and I mean, doesn't mean I'm not going to enjoy some rest time, but the way that our business is built, it's, you know, you can spend a couple hours prior to going on holiday and everything continues as normal, right? Proce payments get processed, emails go out, deal of the week gets sent. We don't even have to think about it. So the business is still going to run. We're still going to sell property up until the end of the month. I mean, we'll probably sell a few more before the end of the end of the year. So uh, we're going, we're going full gas until January and then it'll be even uh, more motivation to go extra hard in January. Right. We want to start off the year. Right. So these last few months business will continue as usual. Yeah. How about you, Eric Peterson? Pretty much the same. Um, I will be uh, traveling at the very end of the month uh, for about a week, a little more than a week. But, uh, you know, I mean, the business will keep running. Um, you know, I'll continue to do what I need to do on a daily basis to keep things running. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm looking to get a few more sales before the year's out. So great. I also think it's good to take that time off just to, to test your systems. Like what does happen when you go away? So it's, it's, I think it's always helpful to stress test those systems. Uh, we already know Scott's answer, but we'll just ask anyways. Scott, will you be working from the boat, on the plane? Because obviously you'll always be kind of working. <laughs> Mark, does Amazon ever shut down? No. There you go. Like, we, yeah, I don't you're, know. you're right. We're an internet business. We never shut down. Right. right. What's the problem? Like, just let it roll, baby. Uh, you know, I think, Mark, I think the thing is, is that, uh, and Tate kind of alluded to it. If you've set it up where, you know, you can, you have a VA team that can do the work and you don't have to do the work, Cynthia, because you don't feel guilty about, you know, not working in an office. Well then, uh, essentially, you know, essentially you're still working, like you're still making the minor tweaks. It doesn't really matter where, where or what you're doing. It's really, it's really just about building that business. And Mark, I, I remember when you, uh, I remember listening to you before I started the land investing business and you were talking to some other people and you know, you were asking like, Hey, uh, I can't remember exactly who it was, but you said, Hey, um, you know, you took a trip and they're like, yeah, I took a trip. And you're like, did you, did you make any sales on your trip? And the guy that you're talking to said, my land investing business paid for the trip. Right. You know, right. And I think that's the thing is that once you build a system, the system doesn't have to stop because you're on a trip, you're on vacation, you're relaxing. The, the machine just continues to operate. And I think that we all need to keep working to build those machines, which we do talk about that in flight school. So if you're looking to build a machine, flight school might be a great option for you. Yeah. I mean, this is, you know, one of my core missions of waking up every day is helping people get out of solo economic dependency which means if they're not working, they're not able to generate uh, income, right? And so, you know, you can, have, you, can have, you can be a doctor and make a lot of money, but if you're not, your hands aren't, let's say if you're a dentist in someone's mouth or you're a surgeon, your hands aren't in someone's body, you're not generating any, any income, right? It might be a lot of income, but you still have solo economic dependency. And so I think it's really important to be hyper aware of those, you know, if, if that's your reality, like, how do I get out of that and, and start making a plan, especially like Mike said, setting those big goals uh, for 2018. So I think that'd be a great topic for the next round table is, you know, how are we setting goals for 2018? What kinds of goals are they? And just the actual, just the process of goal setting in, in and of itself. I think that'd be a good round table topic. What do you think uh, everyone? Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Great. Awesome. All right. Well, now we're at that point in the time where we get to haze Eric Peterson or, as we like to say, the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book. If you're Mike Zato, maybe a quote, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. 
let's give Eric the first shot at it because I know nice. he's, he's been bragging about his tip. Nice. All right. <laughs> um, so this week, my tip is all top. I'll put it in the chat. All top dot com a l l t o p dot com and uh basically it's a it's a tool that uh i like to use to look for content that i might want to share on facebook or you know share with my buyers list things of that nature so you can come in here and um you know search for something like i don't know survival and uh it's going to pull up all kinds of blog articles that that tie to that search keyword and uh, you can go through and, and read the blogs and decide if you want to share one of those on your, your Facebook page or maybe tell your buyers list about it. If it's something that might be helpful to them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's all. Oh, this is kind of cool. It is. Um, how is this different than say pocket? I don't know. I don't know what pocket is. <laughs> Ooh, that could be my tip of the week. All right. All right. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Um, Cynthia Trapati, what's your tip of the week? My tip of the week is a keynote speak that I listened to yesterday. So it's by a guy named Noah Kagan. It's called How I Made a Million Dollars. And that's Kagan with a K, K-A-G-A-N. So this guy, he started, if any of you are familiar with AppSumo, I think he either started or worked for Mint, Facebook. So he's been in kind of that tech industry. And it's just a really good video. It's about an hour. And it's really, first of all, really engaging because he's really funny. But it's also just a really good, I think, video to watch, especially for a lot of you know fellow land investors who are uh, maybe in the beginning of their land investing career and, you know, trying to build their business to the point, you know, where all of you are at, you know, the goals that they're reaching for, but it's just really good. You know, he puts a lot of things in perspective for you and he basically like puts a kind of gives you like his timeline of how long it took him to make a million and, you know, all the things he failed at, but it's just really, he puts kind of a different spin on it and it's really engaging. So I think everyone should go check it out. All right. Fantastic. I love Noah Kagan stuff, by the way. Um, that guy, that guy is just a brilliant marketer and businessman. I just um, learned about Austin, him. Texas. Yeah, and his tools are amazing, and they're super affordable. Um, I'm on his list. AppSumo is phenomenal. Um, Tate Litchfield, what's your tip of the week? All right. My tip of the week is it has to, has to deal with collecting payments. So if any of you are using the new iPhone iOS 11.2, very shortly, you'll be able to collect down payments via the Apple Pay Now button, which is going to be kind of a game changer just because it's another way. It's very similar to, you know, kind of a Venmo. But if you're texting with a, with a potential buyer going back and forth like I was yesterday, you can go ahead and recruit request a down payment payment directly through your messaging app. So um, it's going to be really cool. It's just another, you know, it's another tool in the, in the toolbox for collecting a down payment. You can do it instantly. And so um, I haven't used it yet, but uh, it seems really, really cool. And I can't wait to uh, collect my first payment doing it. Yeah. Now, if you, if you have uh, the iPhone, um, now, do you have to have the eight or the 10 or is it just, uh, it's the iOS 11.2. Okay. So I you have to update. So uh, yeah, yeah, I updated update. a few days ago and I tried actually sending you money, Tate, Scott, oh. and my wife. And it said that you didn't, so they're rolling it out. Yeah. It's, so it's I did try to test it. Phase, but you should try it again. Yeah. If you were trying to send me money, I'm definitely, nah, I think I'm up to date, but yeah, make sure you, you send <laughs> that. You can send me some money. No, you don't okay, have no. it, Eric. You don't have it. I have it, I think. Now, if you do a credit card with it, you got to pay 3%. But if it's, if it's linked to your bank account, it's yeah, free. Exactly. Which is really so, cool. It, it seems really cool. It's just, you know, like I said, it's another tool, another resource for being able to collect a down payment from a potential buyer. So it's good to have all these options. I mean, whatever it takes, right? We want to make it as easy as possible. Okay, now see what that says? It says... 
Tate Litchfield cannot receive payments sent with Apple Pay at this time. So I've been getting this from everybody yet. But so it's just rolling out. Okay. But hopefully well, by next week when they, yeah, when they hit this say, round table. Mark, I would tell you to keep trying on a daily basis. Maybe increase the money every single day. That's <laughs> probably the issue. You're you didn't not, send enough. That's you the didn't problem. send enough, right? <laughs> yeah, One dollar, Apple's not even going to waste its time with Want some zeros. <laughs> Indeed. So, you know, think about the cost of an average lunch and you should try spending that amount. <laughs> okay. You know, I can always request it too if you, that helps. It, you know what? That probably would. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll start doing that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then, then like the next, the next uh, round table, like you'll see like my iPhone just explodes. <laughs> be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, Mike Zeno, what's your tip of the week? <laughs> Can I shut the video off so I don't have to see Scott? He always gives me the funny look when I do my quotes. Throws me off my game. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I don't think I've talked about this before, but if I did, it's worth repeating because – this is something we know our business, uh, uh, well, I'll say this. There's two types of, uh, you know, everybody likes, knows I like to read about Buddhism and whatnot. Well, in Japanese Buddhism, they have this Taizo Kai and Kongo Kai mandalas, these two mandalas, right? And one of them is like the God's eye view of the world and one's like the personal person's view. So kind of like if you were to be inside your house and you look out the window, um, you have that one perspective. But if you were us sitting there looking down at your house, you have another perspective. So how does that apply to our business? Well, I believe we're building this box, this model. Inside, we have these five plates that Scott always talks about. Uh, and we're trying to turn these into gears, connect them together, and we build this box. And truly, we want to be outside that box with a macro view, right? In this case, it would be the uh, Congo Kai, the, the view from the outside. And so, but sometimes we have to tinker. You know, we have to go inside and have that micro view and fix some of the systems. So I think when you're looking at this business and you're trying to figure out how the heck we all automate and do our, again, everything fully functional without our you know sticking our hands in it it's good to have that kind of macro and micro view of things you know you're inside of it you're tinkering but sometimes you need to take a big step back and look at it and see how the parts are feeding each other see, see where the kinks are and go in and then go back inside fix it come back out take another look at it so just the idea of perspective i guess is, is the uh the tip of the week perspective perspective okay um Tate's looking a little bleary-eyed now, but I think I think he's I think he's processing it. Yeah, perspective. I think it's a good tip. I like it. I think it goes with what we were talking about earlier, right? It's success. How do you measure success? It right. depends on your perspective, right? Yeah. When you were talking, about, we were talking about you know what are you doing? I remember the old school with uh, Will Farrell. You know, a little Home Depot, a little Bed Bath and Beyond. That's what we're doing. Today. <laughs> That's what I'm doing today. <laughs> I'm gonna sell some land. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. But before, before the round table starts to devolve, let's go to Scott Todd. Scott, what's your tip of the week? Mark, have you ever heard of this website called Pocket? <laughs> oh, you, you, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, didn't, I don't know anything about it, so I'm going to let you take it. <laughs> but, All right. But actually, here's my tip. And this is like a life tip, and this is just something that happened to me. But Mark, do you have an unlimited data plan on your cell phone? Of course. I need you it. You do? Seriously? Really? Yeah. I Look, I, I didn't have the unlimited data plan. Like I had, like my data plan was a 32 gig plan, a 30 gig plan. I had Veri a, an old Verizon 30 gig plan. And, you know, everybody that wanted to talk to me about, you know, unlimited plans, they freaked me out because it always said that it was, um, you know, throttled after like 22 gigs. And I'm like, well, that's not unlimited, man. And like 22 gigs, that's terrible. My, my kids will run out of that in no time. And uh, little did I realize that it was 22 gigs per line until about two weeks ago. And ah. that's a game changer. So look, do yourself a favor. If you don't have an unlimited plan, you should really think about it because it just changes the way that uh, you look at data on your cell phone like completely. It's amazing. It's a little life tip carrier? from Scott. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Ver Verizon, uh, like I, I have Verizon, but uh, it's called like the Verizon Beyond Unlimited plan. Unlimited data. So like the kids, they can burn through data all they want. I used to have to pay like $5 a month just to be able to like to limit how much data that they were using. That went away. Oh, it's, it's a dream, man. It's, it's a dream. My iPad has unlimited data. That's the best. Right. Great. Abundance. It's an abundant world. It is. It is. 
Well, awesome. Well, my tip of the week is getpocket.com. Getpocket.com. And it kind of competes a little bit with all top, but I think they're different. So yeah, they let's say, for example, you're, you're reading an interesting article. Let's say, I don't know, maybe you're listening to the podcast and uh, you don't get a chance to finish it. You can, go, you can just save it on Pocket. And then for offline listening or reading, you can do that. So check out Get Pocket. They have an app. Uh, they have uh, extensions. So if you're on the web, you're like, oh, I want to get back to that. You can just save it real quickly. Oh, you throw it in your pocket. You yeah. throw it in your pocket. Get Pocket. What do you nice. think? Uh, so you can take all those Eric? articles that you find on All Top and you can save them in Pocket. And then you can go back. Exactly. Exactly. So it's, it's like Evernote. Yeah. It's cool. I don't think it's, I don't know. It's okay. It's good. But, um, you know, if I'm reading something interesting, I'll put it in pocket and um, it's kind of a cool bookmark. You, you can favorite stuff, videos, images, articles. Um, and then they have the recommended stuff, which is what it will keep you from all top. Because then you can go to the recommended and then it'll know the algorithm with stuff that you like. So like for me, it's like Warren Buffett's two list strategy, how to maximize your focus and master your priorities. And I just hit the save and then it goes into my pocket and it's added to my list and I can read it when I want. Right. Um, for you, Eric, you might like this uh, article. Can you die from a broken heart? Um, and just, you know, save that. Sounds like a lot better than lint in your pocket. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, why COO should think like behavioral economists. HBR.org, who doesn't like uh, Harvard Business Review, right? So that would be like something for Mike Zeno. Um, oh, this would be great for Scott Todd, why your brain hates slow pokes. See? Um, oh, for Cynthia Tripathi, mental models I find repeatedly useful, right? And then, of course, uh, for Tate, the disciplined pursuit of less. So there's something for everybody in Get Pocket, um, which I, I think is cool. So I want to thank uh, everyone for being on the podcast. And uh, I want to thank the listeners and just remind you, the only way that uh, we'll get Cynthia Tripathi to come back next week is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit. Boot camp is just about filled up. So if you want to be in the room, in San Antonio, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash bootcamp. I know our room block is already full, but I think there's still rooms at the JW uh, to do that. So Eric's going to be there. Mike's going to be there. Tate's going to be there. Scott's going to be there. Um, it's going to be awesome. So uh, Scott's hot. You know who's going to be there? Who? I think. Wes Schaefer and his wife. Shh. Really? Like sales whisper. Yeah. Wow. I think so. That's yeah. big time. It's kind of cool. Um, that could be kind of fun. So, um, thanks everybody. And, uh, hopefully we'll see everyone next week. Thanks. All right. So it's, it's lunchtime. What's, what's going on for lunch? Well, I guess Eric, you were had lunch, right? I did. Scott probably did too. I did. Mike. Yeah. Me and Cynthia. Scott, Scott, not Panera. Not Panera. Yeah, my food right. gets delivered every week. Hard body meals. You can see the difference. <laughs> wow. Ripped. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I got to get in shape for boot camp because I can't walk in there like a marshmallow. It's going to be tough Zeno. with a fracture. No, it is going to be tough. I, I have to do like something. I'm going mean, to you know, do physical therapy. But, um, you know, I can't look like Elvis before he died coming to boot camp. Mark, I'm kicking myself, man. Right wow. now, because uh, I don't know, about 10 days ago, I looked at the price of Bitcoin and oh. I was like $9,200 a coin. And now it's eleven eight, up $4,000 in the last 30 days. I know. You're shorting it. What are we doing with Bitcoin, man? Short, shorting it. That's a good, great topic for next week. You know, you you know what though? Er short er Eris, Ru Eris no, Ruiz what? knows yeah. a lot about this stuff. You got to talk to Eris. Eris Ruiz, yeah. he knows a lot. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, you can't like, short Bitcoin though. No, Why I, can't I? It's not going to implode. Be- this reminds me of when I was in high school and they had these, everybody goes $20. The guy at the top gets some money and eventually the whole thing imploded. You know, it's Frank kinda- Abagnale is like, it's the biggest fraud. There's a lot of security issues with this. What if we got in and got out? <laughs> well, that's not, yeah, a short-term play. Sure. I'm with you, Scott. I'd get it and get out on it. I mean, in the I, last I, week, I, I honestly I'd rather buy dollars. a piece of raw land that I know will last forever. This is blowing up though, because everybody thinks it's going to, it's this is going to be the biggest, this is when it's going to crack. It's going to keep blowing, blowing, blowing. It's going to hit some of you. Well, you know, it's going to implode. Come on. Like, is it going to, can I make it a week? Can, if I can make it a week, man, Everybody's I can make like, that. you know, a thousand dollars, man, a thousand dollars a week. Come on. It's going to implode. I, it's going to implode. I think I'd almost rather have land though. Right. I'd rather, ha- I'd rather have land. If everyone's zigging, I want to zag. If everyone's talking Bitcoin, I'm going back. Why to didn't we buy Bitcoin when it was earlier though? That's exa- exactly. Just exactly. as a play. So if you wouldn't buy it then, why would you buy it now? I did buy it. Like here, here's what's great. Here's what's great though, is I did buy it. I bought it because I had a, I was working with a guy who's a photographer. He only wanted to be paid by Bitcoin. Right. So I'm looking right. over my transactions from, I don't know, a couple of years ago. And I paid him, this is what kills me though, is I paid him 1.46 Bitcoins oh. a couple of years ago for a total $400, $400 mark, $400. So that those was. pictures today have cost me, I'm like having to do the math now. Those pictures cost grand. me 1.47, 1.47. Seven six times eleven thousand seven ninety three. Those pictures cost me seventeen thousand four hundred dollars. Wow, it better be nice. Whoa, (laughs) but I actually have a balance of forty one dollars in there that it was like four dollars. So winning, winning. Might need to sell it now and really be the the winner. Yeah, Cynthia, what are you doing for lunch, by the way? You know, we haven't gone grocery shopping since we got back from Thanksgiving, so I don't know. Get your meals delivered. Don't even have to grocery shop. It's okay. You know, I have someone that does my meal prep, but she's out of town. So I'm SOL right now. I'm gonna go there you go, saving time. I love oh. it. Tate, are you guys still doing the, that? Uh, is a Blue Apron or? Yeah, yeah, we are. We're, I can't remember which. We're not using Blue Apron anymore. We're using a new company, but um, we've been really happy with them. I, think it's I gotta go you guys. Fresh. All I don't right. even, even, even put my socks on anymore. It's all automated. <laughs> <laughs> Laura? <Yeah. laughs> I, I well, you know what my new thing is? By the way, you guys are like this. I, when I use my electric toothbrush, I do it now, like in the morning, I do it with one leg for core balance. <laughs> Try doing that. And then you switch. So for two minutes, I'm doing a core workout. Good, like actually. That. See, I have use of been, time. This whole podcast, I've been squatting down, not sitting. It looks like I'm in a chair, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm maximizing every minute of my day. <laughs> I've been standing on one leg this whole time. What are you talking about, Mark? <laughs> yeah. This is not new. Yeah. I've been doing the flamingo the whole time. Look at me. Mark's going to start walking on his treadmill with one leg. Hopping. You can only hop on your treadmill. I'm, get, I'm getting the uh, assault. So my, the next podcast will be on the, on the rogue assault. It'll be doing this sweating okay eric peterson what's your tip of the week that i'm sure we'll get tons of uh listeners from that <laughs> that, that voice yes yeah it's like it's like a little Darth uh, vader ish yeah. oh yeah i can't wait for the new uh star wars skywalk awesome. are you gonna go I, eric i just watched the last one you just you know, now watched kid? it yeah you didn't go see it on the yeah. big screen what it no was what? my I boycotted it. I don't know why. It was a filler. It didn't. It was all right. Yeah. And but my wife and I, we we watched it uh, over the, just a couple of days ago. It was great. Really good. That should have been my tip of the week. Yeah. I get a tip of the week. Don't go see the Justice League. That's a tip of the week. Really? really? Well, my kids love Thor. I didn't see it though. Thor was incredible. Justice really? League. Too many people. Too many things happening. Don't waste your time. Sorry, everybody. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go see Thor. Yeah. See, if you guys lived out here, we could, we could all go. <laughs> Thor Rangarara. Over lunch. <laughs> Over lunch. You know, exactly. before 
before we had the baby, every uh, Tuesday we'd go to the movies during during the daytime. It was the greatest tradition. We'd go at like two in the after. We'd get lunch and then we'd go to a movie, and we'd have maybe a couple senior citizens in the room with us. Other than that, it was just us. It was. Did you get quiet. the huge popcorn? Huge, huge popcorn. popcorn. Uh, I don't care if I can't eat it all. I'm getting it. Yeah, always get the big popcorn. Always get a yeah. refill on the way out too. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah. I, I mean, I feel I feel like Tate's life is like Benjamin Button. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I mean, it's crazy. Like he's he's retired. Getting you know, old. he's he was, what, he was like twenty. What are you twenty four? Twenty seven. Twenty seven. I mean, it's a totally Benjamin Button life. It's the good life. It's the good life yeah. for sure. And then then when you're you know in your eighties, you're gonna, like, gonna get a job. Yeah, I'll become a greeter. What's this job like? What's this job thing? What's this, what, what's this thing? When Cynthia was saying, yeah, everybody, you know, comes from a, a kind of a cubicle environment. I thought, I've never been in a cubicle before. I don't even know what that's like. Wait a minute. That's a great movie. See, someone like, yeah, Tate grows old, gets, you know, he goes and works at Walmart. And a young guy, come, young kid comes in and he starts mentoring, not knowing how successful he was in his life, thinking it's just some old guy greeting. All right. So, I'm going to write that right now. Wait that's on a that. good screenplay. All right, I'm, I'm going to go. go uh, he mentors some, his old self. Oh, Ooh. it's like a Back to the Future. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. You don't know that until the end. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I just spoil oh. it for all of our. Spoiler that, alert. Delete this, Mark. It, Mark, delete it. I'm going to delete it. Yeah, it, it, it could be like the. Uh, what, who's, that, who's that director that does like. Um, I see dead people. And. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shum, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Wait, 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 is he, and is he, I mean, listen, we can, we He'll can really it. do this. We can do this on a low budget too, because there's lots of actors that are not employable right now. <laughs> yeah. You Why? Need to I'll delete be the actor. Comments. I got the time. <laughs> I got the time. I'll do it. I'm writing the book. You need to delete this. We can't give away my top. That, that, this is, that's a great movie blind. I like it. That is. Mike, that's 